Don is the uh, president and founder of IKEA Extensions, and actually I've known Don for 42 years. When I was a freshman at the University of Chicago, he was one of the professors who uh, was responsible for one of the required courses. So I was actually in a course of his back in 1965. And that was years before either of us had ever heard of Aikido. Um, but then uh, once Don heard of Aikido and got involved in it, and he fully embraced it. He founded the Aikido Club at the University of Chicago, uh, which has been running now for over 20 years. And uh, he also started to bring Aikido into his uh, courses. He um, did a, a conflict resolution course in the sociology department that included Aikido. And he's also written extensively and has an international reputation in revisioning liberal arts education at the undergraduate level. And one of his points, which he has written about eloquently in one of his five published books, is about bringing a mind-body-spirit practice into uh, college-level education. And uh, his, the example, of course, that he uses is Aikido. Um, about 10 years ago, he became involved with uh, a group that he founded called IP Extensions. I actually don't know the history of the founding of that. I will hear it in a few minutes. But that has now been uh, responsible for opening up dojos in Iraq and Palestine and in the favelas of Brazil and in Brooklyn and many other areas of conflict, as well as bringing Aikido uh, into the domain of higher education where it is taken quite seriously. Other areas involved that IK Extensions has been involved with in is the use of Aikido uh, with uh, children and in therapy and body work and so on. So we'll get to hear a bit of uh, what's been going on over these past 10 years uh, from Don. Thank you. Thank you very much. And let me know which time you want to change the slide. Um, are we all set up there? Uh, okay, I, um, from time to time people ask uh, for an overview and about Ike Extensions, which started about 10 years ago with a dozen, dozen and a half colleagues, uh, largely from this area, uh, some from the East Coast. And basically it started as an attempt to bring together individuals whom I had stumbled upon who were using Aikido in unconventional dojo situations. That is either teaching Aikido in places like prisons or psychiatric treatment centers or using Aikido movements or ideas in a whole range of activities. I said at the time, I'll clap, and if, uh, you know, if a dozen and a half people clap back, we'll do it. Well, they did. Um, and then, as it turned out, more claps started coming in from more places, and we grew from about 18 Americans to several hundred members in 28 countries with projects in about a dozen countries. So um, there's a need out there, and we've reached a point where the organization has grown to where if we don't have more people coming and actively participating, it's going to have to be trimmed very seriously. And so uh, this year we're making an effort to enlarge the membership, to get more people involved in playing leadership roles. Uh, that will determine the future. So I put together this set of slides to be used not just by me but other members or, uh, to, uh, to, to help the public, uh, in particular the Aikido community, learn more about it. So 2008 is where we are. I just returned from a month in Ethiopia where the impact of what we are doing with and through Aikido is far greater than I could have ever imagined happening anywhere, even as recently as three years ago. It's very exciting. It's, uh, it's, it's been involved in new kinds of programs for young people that uh, we may get a huge grant from the 
um, PEPFAR um, uh, funds to spread through Ethiopia and in other African countries. Beyond that, it's had an impact at the national policy level, which I want to talk about in closing. Aikido, which was introduced two years ago, is now familiar to a vast TV public. Uh, live demos have been seen in all parts of the country. It's been adopted for all public high schools in the capital city of Addis Ababa. It's been endorsed by ambassadors. This top picture to the left is Tesfai Tekelu, who is our point man in Ethiopia and will be the first Ethiopian Udansha. This is the Japanese ambassador to Ethiopia who last year held a Japanese youth uh, festival day and, uh, and had some uh, Budo demonstrations, including this gentleman who is a Sandan in, um, in Kendo. He also is a Japanese American who happens to be the ambassador to Ethiopia. So we have these two ambassadors here we have Tesfai with his arms around them, and, uh, and that was a kind of opening of the, of the gate of opportunity for some of the developments I'll tell you about later, namely the national policy discussions and the new youth campus model. Three three-year periods, discovering what we do at first, extending to the community second, and then initiating projects internationally. The fourth, we're right now in a period of uh, assessment, uh, trimming, sharpening our focus, and growing. And the growing, each of these has a kind of growth theme. The growing now is beyond Aikido. Aikido being integrated with other activities that, um, that go beyond either other martial arts or other youth development activities, and we'll talk about that at the end. Okay, let's go to uh, the germs of beginning, please. All right, so I just want to acknowledge my very first Aikido sensei, the late Fumio Toyoto of Chicago, and then a year I spent out here at Stanford uh, with senseis Duran and then Nado. Um, the classic text you all know about, and the innovative texts. And I want to, uh, in particular, call attention to André Protin, who wrote a wonderful book in French, it's never been translated, uh, Aikido, an art martial, une autre manière d'être, and une autre manière d'être, another way of being, is the heart of his argument there. And once you take that seriously, once you take seriously that Aikido is more than a martial art, or as you shall see at the very end, no longer a martial art, in the words of leading Shihans, um, but it is another manner of being. Uh, uh, Satomi Sensei's wonderful book and Richard um, Strozzi Heckler with applications. And then I just want to say a word. Howard Passions is one of our early members. He is a, a PhD psychologist working in New York State mental hospitals, or he was then. And I met him in my travels around dojos, training everywhere I could. And uh, he told me one day that he used Aikido with his patients in the mental hospital and he said, I get far better therapeutic outcomes using Aikido with the patients than I do with any of the standard therapeutic methodologies I was trained in. And when he said that, something went off in my head. And I said, well, it, no, if, if this man has that experience, that's pretty important, isn't it? Why don't we do something with that? And that was kind of the germ of
of the idea of the organization. And then I wrote a talk, I gave a talk at the university when I was dean called the liberal arts and the martial arts. And uh, the New York Times ran it in its education section and George Leonard happened to see it. And George invited me out here and to the dojo to uh, Mill Valley and that's the second big input when uh, Wendy and George and I began to talk about areas of application. And Philip Eminger, who uh, I'd hoped would be here, was in that circle at the beginning and very generously gave us the startup funds we needed to get going. Uh, and then I started teaching this course, Conflict Theory and Aikido, which David referred to, and I have taught it for 20 years. Uh, off and on. There's at least one alumnus of the course sitting in, in, in the audience here. And, um, uh, and for all that time, it was the only course in a certified institution of higher learning in which Aikido formed part of the academic work of the course. Okay, it was um, and uh, it got some international attention, but nobody did anything like it until the past year. And suddenly, six of our members at Williams College, at um, Middlebury College, at Herman University, and in Institute of Transpersonal Psychology, one or two others, all came up with some version of introducing Aikido as part of the, as an integral part of the academic work. And uh, just this last few weeks, I got word of a possible grant that might be coming, a very large grant to the university to um, support research into wisdom. And, and one of the sub-grants in that looks like it's going to a project that I would direct on uh, the wisdom of the body combining um, phenomenological philosophy and psychology with Aiki work. So uh, uh, we are going to have a conference. I decided I retired in, uh, in March of last year, but I'm still kind of active and uh, I decided to offer the course one more time in the fall in connection with that. We are going to bring the half dozen or so. Robert Kent is here back there and he's been coordinating efforts of the people in higher education who are using Aikido in creative ways as part of the, the uh, curriculum. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, I will uh, certainly keep within the time. Um, I'm going to give you a few snapshots of, of the different phases of its growth. And as I say, discovering what we do, that is, the first few years was just an effort to network people who I ran into, and every one of them says, you know, my fellow Aikidoka think I'm crazy, but, uh, and, 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 and one of them was actually trembling. She wasn't sure how she would be treated in her dojo. If word got out, she was using Aikido in some of these off the mat ways. Um, but we had a, um, one of the founding people, uh, Bill Liked in, in New York, was connected with uh, NCPCR, the National Conflict Council of, of Conflict, Peace and Conflict Resolution. And uh, they were having this big conference in Phoenix. And he said, why don't we have a stream, an IK extension stream there? And we did. And we had 13 programs. Um, uh, I don't, didn't put them all down, but Bill Light gave the first one an introduction. Because here were these thousands of peace workers, none of whom had been introduced to embodied peacemaking. And so it was a kind of breakthrough when, when we did this and Phil uh, and Bill uh, presented that. Philip gave one on the myth of the business warrior and I'm still encouraging him to try to turn that into something published. That is that, you know, the myth that 
the, the, the successful business requires extremely belligerent and combative relationships. And here is Philip who built this multi-million dollar organization using Ike, Ike principles all the way and, uh, and saw that. And then there were several others in there. Let's move on to the next. John Ogram is a psychiatrist who has what he calls difficult run treatment center in Virginia and he uses Aikido with his patients. Uh, we had in the evening our first kind of collective conversation among the, the live participants, the founding group, and then on the last day um, um, I, I talked a little bit about my course and Wendy uh, Palmer, who was one of the founding members, as I said, gave uh, the second of two parts of her conscious embodiment work. Uh, then the next year we had our own full-fledged conference at the Aikido of Columbus at Paul Linden's dojo. Um, and um, one of the, uh, uh, this is just a set of topics, uh, poor, uh, troubled kids, conflict resolution, body work, college work, psychotherapy, mediation, and uh, instruction for young people, aka kids. And um, the, the most amazing thing that happened there, I think everyone still remembers, is we got into a, a discussion in the evening about therapy and what constitutes good therapy and therapy outcomes. And like good intellectual folks, we started going after it, you know, and the, the temperatures were rising and people were starting to yell at each other. And someone said, well, how about show it on the, how about show it? And someone got up and, um, <laughs> and said, well, now, when, when I do therapy, this is kind of how, and immediately the atmosphere changed. It was an incredible experience. Just that little bit of effort to embody what we were talking about calmed people down. So, uh, next please. The newsletter, okay, we did conferences every year and we did a bunch of newsletters. The first issue we had already a bunch of youth outreach projects and uh, including one from San Anselmo. Uh, this is Bill Liked with his Peace Village groups that do a combination of uh, meditation, uh, Indian Circle, uh, and Aikido and Bill has expanded that to several schools in New York now. And then Ike Action Workshops. Um, uh, there's not much time to, to go over, but physical practice where some of the standard Aikido um, exercises were, were taught and, um, uh, and, and using just this minimal set of of exercises to show how the new way of being, of acting in an Aiki way, could be taught very efficiently to people who are not hardcore Aikidoka. All right, so these are the next few conferences uh, at uh, Aikido of Tamil Pius nearby, uh, was number three at the University of Chicago, number four, and, um, and uh, in Augsburg, Germany, number five. Um, at, um, at the third conference in Mill Valley, people started to say, hey, this stuff is so important and so good, why are we just talking amongst ourselves? Why not extend into the community? So we did a little bit more uh, proactive extending and then uh, we moved to Germany one of our founding members Peter Shetkin teaches uh, courses using Aikido in the business school at at the University of Augsburg all right let's continue we also published uh, a, a, a small number of Aiki thought papers uh, we've gotten busy with outside projects and have 
that had to be suspended for a while, but we're going to get back into the business, if we can, of publishing Ike Thought papers again. Uh, continue, please. Uh, okay. Now, this gentleman, Jose Bueno Sensei, uh, who, uh, who has run for many years a dojo in Sao Paulo, Brazil, came to the fourth conference and he was so inspired, he went back and he started a project called Asao Harmonia Brazil, uh, Harmony Action. And um, you've all heard, I think, of the favelas, the shanty town slums where migrant workers came and settled 50 years ago and have been living in generations growing up. And the kids grow up in the midst of gunfire, drug dealing, and that's about, those are their role models. And Jose started this project and he brought the kids in and they get, um, they get a meal, they get some coaching in their, in their uh, schoolwork, and they do Aikido. And uh, they look very different from the kids who are, um, who are not involved in this program, I assure you. I took a walk with him in the favelas. Uh, continue. Um, well, let, let me just read, go back, go back, please. Uh, two years ago, we had problems of aggressive behavior. The children lived in a violent environment at home and in the community. They used to report about attacks on neighbors, fights, etc., etc. Aikido came and showed a new way, a new posture, a new heart. Levels of physical and verbal aggression decreased. We could observe more security, self-confidence, and respect, not only among the children, but also for the staff, the family, even at school. They learn to work together and respect others because Aikido promotes these qualities. Today we have a group of children who are making progress toward transformation of body care, mind, and good heart. They are making a difference and so forth. So this is the kind of, of effort that when we become more proactive in taking Aikido into the community, has come about. Now let's go back there. Okay, so one of the areas of application is using Aiki movements and Aikido practice in therapy. Here is um, uh, Erica Rhine, who is at the Two Rock Dojo, uh, who has a problem with developmentally impaired uh, people. And this is, this is from our sixth conference in Virginia, uh, and the gentleman demonstrating is, uh, is Gunther Buck, a Buck from Germany. He and his wife use Aikido for ADD uh, patients very successfully, and he came and demonstrated some of his work there. Uh, Richard introduced uh, Aiki-based Budo training in all marine dojos everywhere in the world. Um, and um, if you go to the July 2000 around there issue of the uh, IK Extensions newsletter, there's a com it's a special issue devoted entirely to that, that project. Um, we also collaborated on trying to organize a conference for the use of Aikido in police training. Very, very difficult to do, uh, and uh, so that one did not succeed. So basically, we, we try things. If they work, we go with them. If they don't, we drop them and move on. So now we start to in initiate internationally. Um, the Sao Paulo project was initiated by a member who is Brazilian living there. Now we start to initiate from the Central Aikido Extension headquarters um, in such areas as peace building, training across borders, and these other um, projects. So let's move and look at them now. Uh, this is our, our most uh, dramatic uh, and, and impactful and successful activity. Um, I meant to bring copies. Of, we have a, a video uh, about that, and uh, I want everyone who hasn't seen it to be have a, a, a look at it. At any rate, um, Training Across Borders, April 2005. Um, 
this uh, this is the t-shirt <laughs> in seven languages we, we had seven official languages and um, and the design is based on this uh, this figure that um, uh, it's better there actually, uh, that is uh, modeled on the city of Nicosia has uh, a wall that was protecting it in the Middle Ages, it's still up, and um, we brought a hundred people, mostly um, Jews from Israel and Arabs from Palestine and Jordan and Iraq and uh, also Greeks and Turks, North and South Cypriots. And for four days, we trained with uh, five uh, outstanding uh, senseis, um, including also from this area beside Richard uh, Heckler sensei, Hans uh, Goto, also Winfried Wagner from Germany, uh, Kurt Bartlett from Switzerland, and uh, Jamie Zimron. Um, and this is where we were. This is the ancient wall. Uh, it's the only militarily divided city in Europe right now, and it gave a special poignancy to our efforts to try to bridge the gap between Arabs and Jews in Palestine, Israel. Okay. Um, well, Keiko uh, and uh, more Keiko. This is at the end. We got around in discussion groups, and um, uh, this is Neil Mick, in case you were wondering. <laughs> and uh, we won't talk about this. And uh, but in addition, there was you know dancing and eating and together and so forth. At the beginning, uh, some of the Arabs and Jews said, "Look, we we grew up hating each other. We don't think this." has a good chance of working. They train together and, and by the end of that, close friendships were formed that still exist and led to projects that are still in motion. Please. And the most exciting of these is called Salam Shalom Aikido. And um, uh, this is uh, um, Miles Kessler sensei, who uh, trained at uh, Iwama for many years. And this is uh, Palestinian Arabs and Israeli Jews training together at our first Salam Shalom Aikido Dojo in East Jerusalem. Uh, this is an Arab from, uh, from I think, Jordan with Miles at uh, the summer camp because after this was such an intense experience that people said we have to keep this going and one of the people was Kurt Bartlett sensei from Zurich and he started a training across border seminar in Zurich every summer we're about to have the fourth and one of the uh, 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 year of it and one of the things Ike extensions has done is support bringing Arabs uh, who otherwise couldn't afford to go so that the Arabs and Jews continue to train together in Zurich uh, as well as people from other countries. Okay, then Awasa. Um, I've had a long-standing professional interest in Ethiopia and I met the TESFI uh, during a visit there to an AIDS um, education project that we have uh, in, in, in the capital of the southern region called Awasa. And so uh, I came up with this idea of, of the Awasa Peace Dojo, and that's the set of things that we talked about. Move on, please. Um, right now, uh, this, is, this is kind of the story of Tesfai. This is uh, this picture I call Tesfai's first Tenkan. Uh, he was a gymnast, and there was this group of gymnasts who were very talented, and they said, um, show us Aikido. So I picked him out, and that was his very first Tenkan, okay? So uh, uh, he came to, uh, to the Training Across Border seminar in Cyprus, and here he is with Richard Sensei. And here he is taking his first um, entry level Q test. He's very talented. He looks at the TVs, he picks it up, 
and uh, he gave, you know, with maybe two weeks of formal instruction, uh, you know, a better 6Q test than, than most of our students who trained for three months. And then he went back and started up the Peace Dojo, and here he is with some of the students. Uh, continue, please. Uh, there we are at the opening. Uh, well, I, w I interviewed him in Amharic for, for the film that was made, and it, and it blew my mind when he said, uh, I think Aikido is better for these kids than gymnastics because it is a way to give them love. These kids is AIDS orphans of whom there are more than a million in Ethiopia. They're also um, or just homeless. Uh, if you go down the streets, they dig a hole and, uh, and, and, and at night they cover themselves over with a sh sheet and, and sleep there and then in the daytime they, they get up and they go off and, and yeah, and they come and they practice Aikido and, and so forth. Um, so uh, we sent Mark Walsh, uh, as some of you know, as an Aiki Corps volunteer there for three months. Uh, and within a year, they're offering classes seven days a week, four different levels to 70 students. Uh, and then I told you about the demo that the Japanese um, ambassador organized, and then they did a 10 city tour. The One Love Theater is the AIDS education uh, um, uh, theater. And um, it, it, it begins with gymnastics to get the attention in these large markets, 5,000 people, and then they do an AIDS education presentation. So the youth campus is half Aikido, half uh, One Love Theater. They've also added art and music instruction and have a little library. And it's just a great place. You go in the afternoon, evening, all kinds of kids coming and going and hanging out. and and it's such a, a, you know, a better option for them than just being on the streets and begging or, or whatever. Okay, um, then um, Tesfai went last summer and by this time he, he trained, uh, had had enough experience teaching and training and studying. He took a second Q test and he's been invited to come this summer for two weeks personal intensive training and probably be ready for his first Q test. So, um, uh, and he kind of is the point man for this. They now have a couple fairly advanced students. And then David Weinstock, who lives in the state of Washington, went with uh, a, a troop, his wife, kid, and two friends, and they spent six weeks there, and David taught Aikido, and the other people taught music, art, uh, tap dancing even, and, um, and theater. So it was, a, it was a wonderful visit. Okay, next please. So this is back to the present, okay? Uh, thanks to Tesfai, Aikido has been seen all over the country because these demos they did were, were televised. Um, so, uh, I'll just close with um, two things, the new campus model. So, you see what we have here in the youth dojo, we have a, a multi-purpose, multi-activity center. Aikido and the teachings of Aikido are central, but theater, music, art, uh, library, you know, is, are, are woven together. And this is one kind of a model which, uh, in, to some extent, uh, was pioneered by Jose Bueno in, in Brazil, uh, but has been amplified. And also, um, let's take the next. Uh, Aikido for young people, uh, kids instruction, there have been lots of seminars, and Robert Kent's involved big time in that. Aikido in higher education, I told you about the conference coming at the end of this year. Aiki Core um, is something that we really would like to uh, support and enlarge. 
Neil Mick, who is here, was our first IKE Corps volunteer. He went to um, a, a center for at-risk young people in San Francisco called Seven Teepees and started a, an Aikido program and carried it out for two years and someone else is, is teaching it now so that looks pretty successful, uh, Lee established and, and then we have, we have sent Peace Corps volunteers to Brazil to the favela slums and to Awasa, Ethiopia. Someday we want to send to Palestine. Um, as I say, if someone is wild enough to go to Baghdad, you know, not encouraging that. But but the point is, there there is we have a success story here. We don't have manpower. I mean, I've been running all this on on a shoestring out of my out of my office. It can't go on like that. I have not found anyone willing and able to step up and say the Ike Corps program makes sense. I will help out. And if I don't, we're gonna cut it. Okay. Um, peace dojos is another. The idea of a peace dojo is that you not only get good Budo training, but you have some related two out of three activities. That is, some outreach into the community, uh, some kind of peacemaking uh, curricular work, and, and some sort of related practice, such as NVC, nonviolent communication, or meditation, or whatever. The interesting thing beside that is that we are now finding other martial arts disciplines interested. This man uh, on the right side, uh, Danny Hakim, is a world-class uh, karate champion. Very, very high level. He is located in Tel Aviv and he started something called Budo for Peace, in which uh, instead of having Salam Shalom joint dojos, he has twin dojos. So he'll have an Arab dojo and a Jewish dojo, and then he'll have them come together for tournaments and so forth. Um, he, is, he is now on the board. Uh, well, he is now a very active member of Ike Extensions. Uh, Bill Liked found a Capoeira dojo in Colombia. We have a Taekwondo, a new member of Ike Extensions who has a Taekwondo dojo in Indiana. So do you see what we're doing? We're spreading Osensei's philosophy and say it doesn't matter if you, what, what you practice. If you practice sincerely and well, uh, the, the enlightened martial arts instructors will all say it's not about going out and and kicking butt. Um, and so we now have a task force with people who are in karate, capoeira, taekwondo, aikido, others <coughs> working on this program. I don't have anyone really ready to take over administration or promotion of this program. If that doesn't come, it won't go any further than it has, but it's already stirred up some pretty good interest. Um, this is David Weinstock who is, has a peace dojo in Washington and is on the committee and headed the group that was training in, in Awasa. Let's move on. The road ahead, returning to the source. Okay. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the mottos that I like for Aiki Extensions, Aiki Waza Michi Shurube, the practice of Aikido is a signpost to the way. So what is the way? And are we following it? Are we practicing it? I have a, I'm closing with a few statements because there are Aikidoka who think that what we're doing is really improper, not what Aikidoka should just be training and, and perfecting their martial skills. So I want you, some of you may I doubt if any of you is familiar with all of these sayings. 
So here they are. Gozo Shioda Sensei wrote a book that's recently been translated. It's called Aikido Shugyo. It's a terrific, terrific um, book about Aikido training. And then he said, the concept of Aikido as a martial skill has ended with me. He trained with O Sensei right up to 1941. And he said, and then O Sensei went in a different path. I didn't follow him. I am the last of his original students for whom it was then Aikibudo training was essentially for a combative skill. Um, if any of you have seen the film of Hikisuchi Sensei, of the origins of Aikido, all right, and there he talks this very emotional scene where he reunites with O Sensei in 1948. And O Sensei pleaded to him, help me establish a wholly new approach to Budo. We must expound and promote a Budo that is dedicated to the creation of peace. Terry Dodson, who was very favored by O Sensei, uh, to, the, uh, to the dismay of some of his Japanese fellow students, said, O oh, Sensei said his mission for me was to spread Aikido around the world and show people how it could be used to create peace in the world. Therefore, okay, given these statements, you know, I'm not telling anybody what Aikido means or what, how you should think about it, nor is Aiki extensions, but Given those statements, Richard Strozzi Heckler says, Aiki Extensions is the 21st century iteration of how O Sensei envisioned Aikido's role in global peace. AE is in a direct lineage to his vision, and it is thus playing out what his vision projected in a world marked by transforming technologies and new epidemics of strife. I don't need to tell you about the new epidemics of strife, and in particular the area of both the Middle East and the Horn of Africa, where Ethiopia is surrounded by four extremely strife-ridden countries and has its own internal problems, how the promotion of Aikido can be extremely valuable in peace building in those two critical areas. So um, is, there, is that the last one? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your attention. I, um, I encourage you again, if you haven't, to pick up the handouts, to join if you aren't a member, to tell us how you would like to participate, if you are or are becoming one, uh, because we are at a critical juncture. And, uh, and unless new players come into the, into the um, universe, uh, I'm, I'm thinking that, th that we've done all we can, you know. I'm thinking we've done all we can. We've done a lot. But uh, it's now there, it, it, it requires much more participation. And I hope some of you will be moved to, to join the effort. Thank you so much for your attention.